Hi guys, good day. Welcome back to the video series Viewerless Automation 7.3. In part 10, I'm going to show you how to prepare VRA templates. So it's not the actual installation of the template, but what we're going to do is we prepare a Windows template and install the guest agent. And the same for the Linux template, where we install the guest agent as well. So that being said, let's just go into it. So here you can see I have a 2016 server. It's just Windows updated, installed and everything. So we're going to install, or we're going to download a PowerShell script from the VRA appliances. So you're going to go to uh, HTTP uh, forward slash software. Actually, that type in that won't work because it's that's no, HTTPS, of course. So HTTPS, I'm going to browse to the VIP of the appliances, forward slash software, scroll down, and there you can find the PowerShell script prepare underscore the area underscore template dot PS1. So I'm going to download that to my template. I'm just going to pop that onto the C drive. Da, 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 da. C drive, there we go. For some reason, it downloaded it as an HTM file. So I'm just going to rename that back to PS1. That's just view extensions, file name extensions. Da, 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 da. So name for PS1. Okay, and fire up PowerShell. Um, because of the execution policy, you won't be able to actually just run it. So VMware nicely put the command on there as well, how to overwrite it or how to bypass it. So it's PowerShell exe no profile. I'm just gonna type it to avoid any funny copy paste mistakes with those hyphens. Sometimes they get misformatted, so bypass. Um, here it only says command prepare VA template PS1, but I've noticed without the full path it actually doesn't work. So I'm just gonna do a C colon backslash prepare template PS1. That's it. That's just gonna take a few seconds to do its magic in the background. There's no point in speeding this up because it literally is just seconds. There we go. So first of all, the VIPFQDN of the VRA appliances. So that's again vra.vgen.co.uk in my case. And the fingers doing something else. I do VRA01, but it's vra.vgen.co.uk. I'm going to accept the certificate. Yes, so the manager service, in my case, is-man.vgame.co.uk. Again, that's the VIP of the load balancer. I'm going to accept the certificate. Cloud provider, vSphere. Da, da, da. And then local system. My templates aren't necessarily in a domain, so I'm just going to use the local system for that. And let's do a thing. I'm gonna shorten the sequence a little bit so you don't need to watch me installing Java. And done. Okay, and we are done. There you go. Um, so I'm just gonna check if the download of the certificate actually worked because A, it's a self sent certificate, and B, in previous versions, it didn't quite work. And you still had to download the certificate manually. The quickest test is you're just going to start the service. So go to services. So the, there we go. VCSC guest agent service. Just going to start it. There we go. And then we go to the install folder, which is C. Colin backslash VRM guest agent. There we go. I'm just gonna wait till the log pops up. It should be guest agent dot log. Uh, there we go. Just refresh guest agent dot log. Uh, no error. That's good. So you can see it 
says at the top the VCAC endpoint is HTTPS ISMAP and there are no other arrows apart from it work uh, waiting for a work item which you will have when you for example install the software um, through the agent etc. So that's that done. It's going to go quickly to my PuTTY connection, connect to my CentOS. Obviously by now you can download the Windows template. So I'm just going to log into my CentOS template. Uh, once more I'm going to download the prepare script. This time it's obviously a shell script. Uh, prepare VR template.sh location uh, I'm just gonna pop it into the home drive W get that probably failed yeah it failed we need to use the no check certificate option and done it's gonna make it executable chmod plus x so then there we go and execute it Looks pretty similar to the PowerShell script. Actually, the other way around, the PowerShell script looks similar to this because the Linux version was there first. <laughs> so, same VRA vegan.co.uk and isman.vegan.co.uk. Once more, confirm the SSL thumbprints. Just gonna leave that and the I install Java. Yes. Uh, would you like to install the installation? Yes. Stop talking. Just do it. Go ahead. So that is relatively quickly. I mean, again, only should take a few seconds. That's why I love Linux. So much, so much more straightforward. There we go. Two things I'm gonna do because it's Linux. Um, it has in its network card configuration a UUID. So the UUID will change when there is a new VM built from that template, but it doesn't update the file, so I'm just going to remove the UUID from it. In some Linux versions, you also have the MAC address in here, so you remove that as well. CentOS 6, for example, has the MAC address. CentOS 7 will only see the UUID, so you save that. Uh, wrong folder. So we go in etc udef uh, rules d and you see a file assist 70 persistent etc etc. When you look at it you can see there is the MAC address on there. There we go. And before shutting down we're just going to delete that file making sure the file is recreated with a new virtual machine so the MAC address is done. And that's it really. So just going to power off Windows machine power off and we're good to go. And in the next video, I'm going to show you component profiles and locations. See you then.